it's Saturday the 10th of November 2012. This is Chris Reard and welcoming you to today's United Kingdom talk. I'm a little bit late recording today. I've had, I've had to pop down to the cycle repair place, uh, Bracknell Cycles in a town centre, at a puncher. I had a puncher, oh, it must, I think it was on Tuesday it started, and it was a slow puncher. So Tuesday, I noticed the tyre was completely flat. So um, I pumped it up, I went to the, to the um, swimming pool, came back again, and it was okay. So, you know, then a day passed, and the next Wednesday, then Wednesday uh, it was flat again. So I pumped it up, went swimming, came back, and I noticed, noticed it was a little bit flatter when I got back. And it just gradually got worse, and today I thought, well... It is time to repair the puncher on recording day. So I'm, I'm late recording, which means nothing to you anyway, does it? You know, you, you don't care what time I record this. As long, as long as it's there on the Saturday and on the Wednesday, you're happy, I think, darling. So I'm a little bit late recording today. Mind you, that's not been, a, it's not bad, really. They charged me £17 um, to put a new inner tube in. And I had one of those inner tubes with that slime stuff in. Now, this is like an inner tube in a cycle, but it's got this green stuff in. Now, as you go around, I, I don't know what, what it's actually made of. It, is, is it like liquefied rubber or something like that? As it goes around, it's supposed to go around with the tyre, but it's liquid form. And if it finds a little hole, it, it suddenly... A lot of people think, should, uh, think probably that I could have a little bit of tape across my mouth. Might be an idea when it might shut me up for five minutes. So they charged me £17.50 for that, so I'm quite pleased about that. Mind you, that was not my only bike woes this week. Oh, boys and girls, it's so embarrassing. It's so embarrassing. So there I was, cycling along to Wokingham. And I almost got to my destination, you know, the Virgin Active Sports Centre. Um, and the swimming pool there. And I stopped at the bank on the way there. And it was a bit wet. Now, it was one of those days, I, oh yes, yes, I do come out in the rain, you know, on my bike. I'm not one of these fair weather cyclists. Oh, oh no, oh no, there's a cloud, there's one cloud in this, oh I can't come out, no. No, it might rain. No, no, I can't come out. No, I'm not one of those, dear. Oh no. Rain, house, sleep, the only thing I won't come out is in snow. Because you can, it's practically impossible to cycle in the snow. Have you, have you ever tried it? Oh, it's to, even worse than that, do not please take your bikes out if there's ice on the ground. Worst thing you can do, you cannot control that bike, okay? Do not come out on the ice. So there's a couple of things. But I'm not just a fair weather cyclist. My mate Ron, he's got a bike. <laughs> do you know, it's been on out once this year. Once, dear. Once. Oh, oh no, I'm not coming. Oh, it's too cold. Too cold. I have to take the car. I mean, how is one supposed to exercise one muscles and other bits and pieces if you won't come out and do a bit of exercise in a cold, dear? Mind you, last week I actually convinced... I couldn't believe it. I convinced him on, I think it was Saturday or Friday afternoon, to go for a walk in the forest with me. And, you know, once he was in there, he loved it. He loved it, but it was... Oh, it wore him out, poor old soul. Oh, he really is aged. He's ten years younger than me. He just can't keep up, dear. He can't keep up, unlike ultra-fit Chris Reardon. Oh, yes. Do you know what? I went. I popped down to the doctors uh, today, uh, uh, this week, for um, for my uh, normal normal um, thing. I have to go uh, every uh, now and again for checkups or, on something. And um, they do my um, heart rate and all that business. And get this, get this. Those of you that are gym fanatics, is there anyone listening in the gym at the moment? Are you listening to this show in a gym somewhere? Are you lifting weights while you're listening to my dulcet toads, tones reverberating in your lug holes? Are you? Well, get this. Would you like to know what my resting heart rate is? Go on, have a guess, have a guess. <laughs> Is it 70? I don't think so. It's not 70. No, is it 65? No, it's not 65. Which I gather is about average. Sorry, I've got my cup of tea here today. Is it 60? No, it's not 60. Which is better than average. Is it 55? No, it's not 55. Is it 50? No, it's not 50. My resting heart rate, as checked on Wednesday, by the great doctor is 48. 
That's better than athletic. Go and have a look at it on these charts. Type into Google resting heart rate and you find ages at the bottom and heart rates along the side. 48 is like an 18 year old's. Ha! You see? See how fit I am? Fit but fat, boys and girls. Fit but fat. You can be apparently fit by fit but fat, as I saw in the Daily Mail um, article the other week. So there we are. I'm quite pleased about that. Blood pressure normal. Everything normal. Everything normal except the little problem, which won't go away. But there we are. Yes, 48, dear. Heart rate. Do yours. Go on, do yours. Count a minute. Find your pulse. Go on, have a, have a, I bet you can't find it now, can you? Can you find your pulse? Go on, try. No, I can't, no, can't find anything there. Can't find anything there. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll do it, we'll do it for 30 seconds together, shall we? Okay, so go on, find your pulse. Can you find your pulse? I must say I can't find mine. Have a little feel around. Let me try the other one. No, I can't find a thing. Is it because I'm talking? No, can't do it. Oh no, well we'll give that one up then. But if you've... <laughs> find your pulse and time it for an hour, ha uh, for a minute. How many pulses do you get in that minute? I get 48. I'm just so athletic and fit. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. Anyway, back to the story. So, on my way there. So, it's a bit wet on the road. I want to go to the bank. And I come along this way and I thought I'd just bump up the curb there. And I tried to bump up the curb. And boys and girls, that's where it all went wrong. <laughs> You're Chris Reardon. International celebrity, award-winning DJ, landlord, broadcaster, environmental, conservationist, pilot, master of merriment, karaoke host, friend to animals, vegetarian, and your fairy godmother, your Chris Reardon, collapsed on the floor with his bicycle in the road. Thank God there was nothing coming along, dear. I have never been so embarrassed. It's not, it's not the falling over there. It's not the hurt. It's not the hurt that does it, is it? It's the being noticed by people. There you are, a little crumple on the side of the road. Help me, help me! Oh, it wasn't like that. But, you know, being Wokingham, <clears throat> three people rushed over to see if I was okay. Yeah, you know, you don't get that every You wouldn't get that in London. You certainly wouldn't get that in New York. They would walk over you. Yes, you would. Yeah, you would. I know you would. You would just step over me in New York because it happened there. It was a really busy street, and my my foot somehow missed the pavement and ended up in the gutter. And I went tumbling over, and some woman stepped over me and says, "Why don't you watch where you're going?" And I thought, "How bloody rude are you?" <laughs> so I know that in New York you couldn't give a toss, could you? Don't care. No one cares. Dead people in the road, they're just stepping over them, carrying on doing their shopping. Vile. Absolutely vile. But three people came into me in Wokingham and seed saw if I was alright, so I'm quite pleased about that. Anyway, I got up and carried on with carried on with my day's business. Nice big bruise on the bottom of my shin. And I went to um, uh, the Virgin uh, Sports Centre. I have to say, something's gone wrong with that swimming pool because it's been bloody cold recently. Really cold. You know, I've been going there 18 months, and it's never been... Now and again, you get a cold, it might be cold, where well, they've done a, a bit of... A, refilled it with water. Now, what do they call that? Backfill, I think it is. If they refill it with water, it can be cold occasionally. But this has been going on now for um, over nearly two weeks. And it's been damn cold when you get in. And you know it's cold, because obviously as you go as you go along and start doing things, you do warm up a bit. But if it's still cold, you can feel the coldness on the surface. So anything that's kind of sticking out, you know where the surface of the water is, it feels cold that and it's so cold. And I've been complaining every day. And it's the old it's the old answers I've been getting from certain people, um, as in you're the only one that's complaining. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. And I know I'm not the only one who's complaining because you talk to the other people in the pool. It is so cold. And I've kept complaining. And then yesterday, yesterday, 
uh, oh no, it was Thursday, there were these two blokes in suits standing at the end of the, at the end of the pool. You know, it's all very well complaining to the boys and girls that work around the pool, but you know, they're not responsible for the heating and they can pass the message on. So as point is, I wouldn't have a go and they work hard, they do, and a very, very boring job. You know, hanging around a swimming pool waiting for someone to possibly die and then rescue them and then force their face upon them and start blowing into their lungs. Or I might, be, might pretend to die, actually, because there's a couple of cuties working around that pool. I have to tell you. I might try that one to see if I can get a snog off someone. Anyway, um, so it's pointless, you know, don't have a go at the people, the boys and girls working behind the, around the pool because they work up. You've got to get someone in a suit. And there they were, you know, standing full of importance at the end of the pool. I hate people in suits, you know that. Oh, there they are. Oh, so, so important. Excuse me, boys. And at that point, the woman who was swimming in the lane next to me also stopped uh, and, and started speaking. I thought, oh, she, that's that's good. She's going to complain. Well, can you tell me why this is so cold? It's been like this over a week now. And do you know what he said to me? Oh, we've just take the, checked the temperature, and it's half a degree warmer than it was yesterday. I thought, I thought, and I nearly, I laughed in his face. I laughed in his face. Like we are going to notice half a degree's difference. Are you having a laugh? Are you having a laugh? I don't think so. Anyway, I complained to him. He started coming out with some bull crap about it, about the the weather being cold outside and it had been sucking in cold air and that was affecting the pool. What a load of old rubbish. I nearly swore then. What a load of old rubbish that is. Anyway, so I complained to him and then later, on the way out, I noticed him and another man sitting at a table in the restaurant area. And uh, one of the pool boys was sitting there. I said, who's those two? Oh, that's so-and-so in health and safety. I said, oh, lovely. So I went straight over there and I started on them again. <laughs> it's horrible. It's nothing worse than getting into a cold swimming pool, is there? I do hate it. So I stood there and complained for five minutes. And then I went. Anyway, so I didn't go the next day. <clears throat> I beg your pardon, all this happened on Thursday. I didn't go Friday because that's my record day. And um, I, I, I usually go Friday, but because I had to take the bike in for repair and all that business as well, I didn't have time. Um, so hopefully by Monday it will have uh, improved because then got Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. That's three days to heat up the pool. Let's see if it's any better now. And if, if they don't sort this out, I shall just go somewhere else because I want a rolling contract anyway. You know, I pay monthly. And my, my, uh, when you first join, you have to sign up for a year, and then you pay monthly, or, or you sign up for another year, whatever. I pay monthly. Um, so that's what I do. I'm not, I'm not going into a cold pool all the time. Oh, it's horrible. I mean, why would I want to do that? I might as well go down the council run pool. That's warmer than the Virgin one at the moment. Or, it, or that, that the council run pool, the council's got three pools. They've got a, a small pool for toddlers, which you don't go in. Then there's a training pool, it's a full size one, which is warmish. Okay, and then there's the main pool, which is cold. You don't want to go in the main pool, that is blooming cold. But the, the one in the middle is all right. But there's a lot of people in there all the time, you see what I mean? That's why I go to the virgin one. If they can't sort out the heat, I should just go somewhere else and be done with it. So um, that's my, um, that's my uh, predicaments this week. Falling off a bike, punctures and cold swimming pool. I mean, does it get any worse than that? Well, actually it does. It does. Not last week, but the week before, because I didn't have time to tell you about this. Can I just have a sip of my tea? You don't mind, do you? Mm. Oh, we do like a cup of tea. So, I'm working in a venue. Now, I won't name which particular venue it is, because it's nothing to do with them, and I wouldn't want a bad name to be given for that. But, working in a venue the week before last, um, someone... It was quite a busy night. Someone comes over and hands me someone's passport. Hello, someone's dropped a passport. Now, often, as the DJ or karaoke host or quiz host or something like that, if there's a problem, often people will come to you first because you're kind of the front man. It may well be nothing to do with you. And I, I know there are DJs or people like that who would, who would, can I just get comfortable on my seat here? Who would say, no, nothing to do with me, mate, hand it behind the bar, which I could do if I wanted to. But I like to uh, try and help people, and so um, I, I, I thought, okay, fair enough. Oh, I haven't put my poppy on. Sorry, I should put my poppy, where can I put my poppy? I've got poppy on today. 
that's to remember the people that died in the war. You see, there we are. Got my poppy. Got to have the thank you. Got to have the poppy on. Um. Uh. Yes. So you, ca I can hand it behind the bar, and and that's fine. But anyway, someone, someone handed me this passport, so I looked at it. And there we go. We got a name on there, and of course, being a passport, there's a little photograph on the side. And um, I called out the name, and it was a girl's name, and it was an Australian passport. Okay. So I called out this name, and this girl come over. She says, she said, yeah, 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 like that, yeah, 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 I'm so-and-so, and I'm like, oh, hello, um, I think this is your passport, and she took it out of my hand, she didn't grab it, she took it out of my hand, and walked off, nothing, absolutely nothing, now, I don't want a reward, I don't want a drink, I don't want money, I don't want anything, but I expect a bloody thank you. I said, excuse me, excuse me, uh, hello, and she turned around, what? I said, how about a thank you? Oh, oh, thank you, and walked off. You think that's bad? I thought it was a girl thing. No disrespect, ladies, but some of these young girls are bloody rude. They really are rude. I thought it was a girl thing. But blow me down. An hour later, I looked on the floor in front of the stage, and there was a wallet. So I picked up this wallet. Again, I looked at it, opened it up. There was money in there. Quite a lot of money, about 70, 80 pounds in 20s and 10s. All like, you know, and wrapped up in there. That, you know, as soon as you opened it, there was the money's there in like a elastic band around it. There were the credit cards on one side, I don't know what ones. And then I noticed the pink driving license on the left, so I immediately took that out. There's a name, there's a photograph. Good, so I called the person over. Remember his name, Henry, Henry someone. Henry, da da da, whatever. Could you come over, I've got some, uh, could you come over and see me please? And so he come over, yep. Yes mate. I said, have you lost anything? He said, oh my wallet. I said, there you go. And again, exactly the same response. He was about 23 years old, same age as the girl, about 23. He was English, she was Australian. Now I tell you that, just say, oh it must be something to do with the Australians, or it must be something to do with the English. No it's not, because exactly the same response. He took the wallet out of my hand and walked off. And this time I didn't bother. I just stood there with my mouth open for a few seconds. And I said to someone standing, I said to someone standing next to me, did you see that? He said, yeah. They don't even say thank you. How rude is that? I wouldn't dream of, of not saying thank you if someone did that. Do you know the hassle people would go through if by the end of the night, they hadn't realised it was missing, so they go home the next day, oh, my wallet's missing, or my passport's missing. Do you realise the hassle they would go through to cancel all those credit cards, find another passport, get a new driving licence? The hassle they would go through. And then they might ring up the bar the next day, hello, has anyone handed a wallet in? Well, of course, by then, it's been through many hands. I'm not saying that anyone would steal, but the fact is, instead of just me, it would have gone through many other hands by this time. Okay? And if it's still there, then they've got to come back in and collect it and prove that it's theirs. By me taking it and reading out the name, obviously I don't just give it to someone. You know, if there's no photograph in there, what I would do then is say, um, if it's a mobile phone, can you tell me what sort of mobile phone you've got? Um, is it in a case? What does the case look like? Or, you know, if it's a wallet, can you tell me who you bank with? What credit cards have you got? And then, then if they can tell me, then I'll hand it back. Or if there's an initial in the name, can you tell me your second initial? And then I'll hand it to them. <coughs> I don't just hand it over, <coughs> over willy-nilly. But the hassle someone would go through to get something like that back. And yet, 
Not a word of thanks. I thought it was me. Am I being a bit picky? So I went onto Facebook to announce what had gone on. A friend of mine, very good friend of mine, Ryan, who's a, a DJ at uh, various places up north, came on and told me he once had a wallet handed to him and he announced the name and then this bloke came over and it looked like the right bloke from a photograph or whatever he had in his wallet. And he said, there you go, mate. And the bloke said to him, well, what the effing hell were you doing with it? Grabbed it out of his hand and walked off. Now, I don't know millions and millions of people. But you see what I mean? It's not just me. Another friend of mine, David Rosen, used to be a DJ, he's a minicab driver now. He dropped someone off and he was driving to his next des destination, just happened to look back in the back seat, as you do, checking for things, and there's a purse sitting there, on the back seat. Picked up the purse, looked in it, there you go, oh, it's a lady I dropped off 20 minutes ago. He said, I'll pop, you know, pop round and, 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 and give it back. Goes round there, knocks on the door, door opens, yes. Oh, hello, you've left something in the back of the cab. Woman snatches it out of his hand and slams the door in his face. She wasn't young. Another occasion he gave me is when he picked up a load of young girls and they were shouting and screaming in the back of his cab and he said, can you keep the noise down in there? And one of the girls screamed at him, just get on with the effing driving. At which point he fumed. He slammed on his brakes. The girl slid forward, banged her head on the back of the seat. Good. Good. Right? And he said, get out of the cab. What do you mean, get out of the cab? Get out. And he was screaming at him, get out of the cab now. And he left them in the middle of the pavement. Too right as well. You can't be talking to people like this. What is wrong with people being so rude all the time? There's a chain of shops that have just gone bust, Comet. There will be various reasons why a chain of shop goes bust. I don't think there's one particular reason. But I think one of the reasons is customer service. You go in a lot of these chain shops now, and the customer service is dire. Absolutely dire. Not only is the customer service bad, but half the time, they haven't got a clue what they're looking for. You say, excuse me, that camera over there, does it have um, an extension socket for a microphone? Oh, uh, no, pick up a box. I had, this, I, had this, uh, I had this in a chain shop called Jessup's. They do cameras and all that. The one in Bracknell, which, funnily enough, is closed. And um, I was buying a camera. I was actually buying a camera to do this show with, right? And I said to this bloke, has that got a, an external microphone socket thing in there? Oh, I don't know. So he picked up the box and said, no. he said, no, well, I, it doesn't say it, but I think it has. I said, well, can you get it out of the box and have a look? Oh, no, we can't open the box. <laughs> I said, well, how do I know if it is or not? I said, can I bring it back if, if it's not got one on it? He said, no, only if it's not working. All right, OK, then, well, I'll leave it then. And I walked out, went somewhere else. I think I went to Dixon's at the time, who had one on show, showed it to me, and indeed it did have a microphone socket on it. So I bought it from there. Had they have got it out of the box there, I would have bought it from them. Not good customer service. You go in any of these places, Dixon, Curry's, I've had bad service in Curry's, uh, you know, some... He just <coughs> doesn't even look like he cares whether he's going to sell it to you or not. You know the sort of thing? Just a complete and utter waste of time trying to get anything out of them. And I believe that's why some of these places are going to the dogs. One of the reasons is the bad customer service. A lot of shops now, they actually send their young people away for training in customer service. And I just don't get this, right? 
if I was working in a shop or a pub, well, I do work in a pub or somewhere like that, I would give good customers up. I would damn well make sure that you went out knowing with, with what you wanted and it had been a pleasurable experience. I want you to come back into my shop or pub or club or back in my cab, whatever. To me, being, oh, what term would I use? Um, being, being nice. Okay, being nice. Knowing my job would be like second nature. I wouldn't have to be trained to be nice to someone. I just don't get it. Now, interestingly enough, in Waitrose, and John Lewis. They seem to be naturally nice. If you have a conversation with them, they will talk to you about whatever you're talking about. It seems to just flow naturally. Whereas in Sainsbury's, they seem to try and strike up a conversation at the till. And how are you today, sir? And I think it sounds so false. Why bother? Because <coughs> it just sounds so false. They don't really sound like they want to be having the conversation with you. Do you understand what I mean? To me, it just flows naturally. Why? And, and it used to do when I was a child. I remember going into a shop with mum and dad. And it just seemed to flow naturally. This whole customer service thing. You didn't need to be trained to give good customer service. You just knew what to do instinctively. Are they just employing the wrong people, I wonder? Why does someone have to be trained to be nice to you on the till? Why doesn't it just happen? Your thoughts on that, please? I'd love to know. My email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Of course, John Lewis and Waitrose are the same uh, people. The customer service I've mentioned many, many times on is absolutely second to none. They are nice when you go in there or when you ring up. If something goes wrong, they seem to sort it out pretty quickly. I was talking to my mate last night about this very subject. And he said he ordered a sofa from John Lewis and it came back. And there was a small dent in the back of it. And he rung them up immediately and they said, Oh, I'm very sorry, sir. What would you like us to do? We can give you a full refund and come and collect the sofa. We can send round our loss assessor who can give you a bit of a discount on the one you've got. Or we can send a replacement. What would you like us to do? That, that, dear friends, is customer service. Not when you're on the phone, oh, well, it was all right when it sent out and that sort of thing. That's, that's the sort of thing you'd get from some of these places. And they're just so bloody rude all the time. They really are rude people. And I'm getting rather sick of it. Rather sick of it. Any comments on that, please? Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. All right, now... Mm. And I'll just finish this tea. I've just realised I've now been talking for nearly half an hour. <clears throat> and I did say these shows are going to get a bit smaller. And we're going to do two of them. But now there's all these emails. So I'll just do a couple of these. And we'll save those for the uh, Wednesday show this week. All right. Going to say hello to lovely Kath in Wales. Hello, Kath. How are you, my darling? She says... Um, always nice to hear from you, and please do you remember me? Of course I remember you, Claff. Of course I remember you. How are you keeping, Chris? Uh, very well, thank you very much. Everything's going very well. Um, everything under control here. Uh, starting a new karaoke uh, tomorrow, Sunday. Yes, at another Blue Shears in um, Camden Town. So that's Sunday the, um, was it, the, the 11th of uh, November. Every Sunday, karaoke at Blue Shears. Camden High Street between 8pm and midnight. So I'm very pleased uh, to announce that I'm working uh, every night again, near enough. Kath says, for me, 2012 has been a big improvement on 2011. 
still copio still coping with um some stuff she told me privately about but um uh, she she's doing very well with our cat she said i'm pleased that katie is keeping you on your toes good for her i'm glad someone can katie demands things of me she sits she cuts not here today she she was meowing earlier she, meow meow she wakes me up in the morning she comes to me for cuddles oh i love my cat she said, it's about time you arranged a dead letterbox. Can you let me the, know the address? I don't think you gave it out on the show last week. <laughs> Is it the Mayflower that you mentioned on the show? Please keep in touch from Kath. No, Kath. I know. I, I did give it out on the last show. But foolishly, when I first mentioned that we had a postal address once again, I then said I'd give it out to you in a minute. And then I didn't give it out, did I? But I have. And here comes the postal address if anyone wants to send anything in. It's Chris Reardon. <clears throat> C.O. No, sorry, first line, Chris Reardon, okay. Next line, C.O. Two Brewers, T.W.O. And then B.R.E.W.E.R.S. I'm very uncomfortable today for some reason. Two Brewers. 114, 114, Clapham High Street, C.L.A.P.H.A.M. Okay. London, S.W.4. 7UJ, United Kingdom. All right, I'll give it to you again in a minute if you want to grab a pen or paper. But uh, Kath has already sent in a couple of little cards to this address. Oh, second class, second class, second class stamp on there. Thank you, Kath. Yep, two right and all. These are uh, first class ones. And uh, Kath sends a lovely little picture of a, uh, we don't just stand there. She says, don't just stand there, negotiate. And there's, there's, there's all these cats. There's two cats and loads of mice in this picture. And it says, hello, Chris. I'm pleased you've got a dead letterbox again. Obviously, she sent this after she got the address on the last show. I like the idea of being able to put a card in a post to you from time to time. I also like the idea of two shorter shows a week instead of one longer one. Hope this works out for you, Chris. Regards from Caff. And I think it is working out, Kath, so there we are. And Kath also sends in my first Christmas card of the year. Da -da -da -da. The holly and the ivy, the first Noel, ding dong merrily on sky. And it's a, a little picture of one, two, three, four, five, six choir boys uh, holding one of those lanterns and a lovely Christmas tree there as well in the picture. To Chris, wishing you a very happy and joyful Christmas and New Year. Uh, regards from Caf. So thank you ever so much for that, Caf. My first Christmas card this year. I must do a display on the wall behind me. And yours will be, of course, the first. Oh, I can't. But actually, I can't put it on the lights because that's got all wires in it. I don't know what I'm going to do. I just have to, I have to think of some way of displaying my cards this year. Thank you, Caf. Very, very kind indeed, my darling. Here's the address again. Those of you that didn't hear it first time around. It's Chris Reardon, CO, Two Brewers, 114, Clapham High Street, C-L-A-P-H-A-M High Street, C-L-A-P-H-A-M High Street, 114, Clapham High Street, London, SW4, 7UJ. And uh, United Kingdom at the bottom there, if you're outside the UK. And uh, very kindly, one of my managers of the pub, uh, Mr. Jimmy Smith, uh, kindly um, allowed me to use the uh, postal address there. Uh, hello to CW in Australia, who says, Good day, Chris from Victoria, Australia here. Just wanted to say how happy I am that you are back with your regular sized shows. Just loving it, mate. When might you visit our little part of the world again? Hope all is well with you and yours. And that's uh, Chris from Victoria. Well, Chris, um, not this year, I'm afraid. Uh, I was waiting for the British Airways sale uh, to Australia. And this year it didn't happen. Rather disappointingly. So not going to be vi uh, visiting Australia this year. I'm going to New York, however, in February for my birthday to see Mr Barry Mano. And looking, very much looking forward to that. Thank you very much. We'll do uh, one more email here, I think, and then we'll do the rest um, on um, Wednesday's show. Now, where's, there was a smaller email here, because I, I don't want to overdo the time on you. Oh, where's that small one gone? 
was from Millie. There it is. Millie. 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 Hello, Millie. Millie said this on the 27th of October, so it's been hanging around there. How wonderful that you're going to see Barry Manilow for your birthday. Looks like we made it. I write the songs that make... And all that business. Yes, I'm very much looking forward to that. How cool is that? About time you did something like this for yourself, if you ask me. I'm just more happy to hear that you have a post address for us to use again. Now I can spoil you again like I always used to. Yeah, anything you want, just send it down there, okay? Sending you loads of cuddles, or as you call them, Millie Hugs. Please give one to Katie Kins too. I hope you can find out what's causing the scabs in her fur. They must make our poor little girl uncomfortable. And that's from lovely Millie in uh, Minnesota. Well, actually, Millie... I've been, I was checking her yesterday and the scabs appear to have gone. There are, the scabs have stopped on the cat. So really, I don't know what was causing them. Um, I do know a week ago I gave her a worming tablet and I did the little flea thing on her neck. You know, when you squeeze that thing on the back of their neck. And it may have been something to do with one of those things. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, but that's what I did, Millie. And it seems to have uh, improved things now. In. No more scabs on my little cat, I'm pleased to say. That's it from the show today, boys and girls. Uh, I've got some emails here. I'm holding over to the next show on Wednesday uh, from Ryan. There's a bit more from Jeffrey, our quiz man. Uh, James and uh, lovely Marge. I've got a, a, a selection of emails here from Marge. And uh, I think the next show might just be emails, actually, because there's a lot to talk about there. Uh, and uh, you would have kindly sent in their bits and pieces. All right, once again, the email address, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. If you have iTunes, you can subscribe to this program, either the audio show or the video show, on iTunes. If you just type into the top there, uh, United Kingdom Talk, and it will come up on my iTunes, and you can just hit subscribe, and then whenever there's a new show, it will just download automatically. Also on YouTube, my username on YouTube is Chris Reardon UK. If you want to subscribe on YouTube, Chris Reardon UK. Uh, Facebook, also available on Facebook. My Facebook name, facebook.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. Again, join us on there. And uh, just uh, uh, someone was asking, saying to me that I didn't come up anymore on their news feeds. Now, you would have changed... Or, or, or a setting somehow would have changed from there. If you just go to my Facebook page, Chris Reardon, and then click Friends, okay, and then you'll get a variety of options come up there. You need to have Show in Newsfeed ticked, okay, and also click on that Show in Newsfeed thing, and within that, Show all updates. Otherwise, you won't get everything. OK, so that's how you do it on Facebook. Go to my Facebook page, Chris Reardon UK. Uh, click on the, the, the little... <coughs> you have to be a friend, of course. Click on the friends thing, which should be ticked. Then, um, what did I say to you? Show... Oh, um... Well, what did I say to you now? Show in news feeds. Yeah, show in news feeds had to be, has to be ticked. And also, within that little thing... Uh, show all updates, otherwise you won't see any, everything or that. Uh, but the easiest way to watch or just listen to the show is go to the main United Kingdom Talk website, www.unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Have a lovely weekend. I'll see you on Wednesday's show. Thanks for watching and listening. Bye-bye. <laughs>